Reddit. Serious, what is a seemingly normal photo that has a disturbing backstory? Links to all pictures or articles in the description. The leading image on Franklin Delano Floyd's Wikipedia page, a father and his daughter posing for a family photo. In actuality, the little girl is Floyd's stepdaughter, Suzanne Marie Savakis, who he'd kidnapped around 1974, when Suzanne was under 10 years old. He would go on to raise her as his daughter, putting her through high school under several pseudonyms, then have a son with her Indiana 19881 and marry her in 1989, under the name Tanya Hughes. By 1990, Tanya Suzanne had decided to leave Floyd, and take her son, Michael, with her. In April of that year, she was found beaten and bruised on the side of a highway, and subsequently died in hospital. Michael went into foster care and was adopted by a loving family, only to be kidnapped by Floyd in 1994 and to never be seen again. Floyd was arrested in late 1994. The news about his late second wife being his kidnapped stepdaughter didn't come out until 2014. 1. Someone rightly pointed out that Michael is not Floyd's biological son. This was only discovered when DNA testing was performed as part of Michael's adoption in 1994, when he was 4 to 5 years old. Presumably, up until that point, Floyd had reason to believe he was the biological father, photos of his were found that depicted sexual exploitation of Suzanne slash Tanya from the age of 4. This is the photo Kurt Diemberger took after his companion, the illustrious alpinist Hermann Buell, fell into the abyss on the Himalayan mountain Kogalasa. Buell was walking behind Diemberger and momentarily left the trail after which he fell through an overhanging cornice. He remains in the ice. This photo. John Edwards Robinson, yellow sweater, is holding baby Tiffany, whose mother he murdered the day before. He gave baby Tiffany to his brother, saying she was adopted. His brother, along with Tiffany, didn't find out the truth for 15 years. I remember moving to a small suburb town of Raymore, Missouri just 15 minutes south of Kansas City. It was just a couple months after moving there they found John Robinson's storage unit with 55-gallon drums with the corpses inside. I would ride my bicycle by them every day. This looks like a stock photo of a violin. The instrument in that picture is the Hartley violin. It was owned by Wallace Hartley, the bandmaster and lead violinist on the Titanic. It was the one he carried with him on the night the ship sank. Survivors reported seeing Hartley and his band on the deck of the ship during the sinking, playing to calm passengers as they boarded the insufficient lifeboats. This is the exact instrument he played. Hartley and every member of the band died in the sinking. We have his violin because at some unknown point before his death, Hartley tucked the violin back into its monogrammed case for safekeeping. That's how it was found, floating in the debris field, by one of the ships sent to recover bodies from the wreck. They were able to identify it as Hartley's because of an engraved brass plate, and it was returned to his fiancée, who kept it until her death. Her family authenticated it and sold it for $1.6 million to an organization that collects Titanic artifacts. A still photo from a video. A man who swam to his girlfriend in their underwater hotel room while on vacation in Tanzania, and proposed to her with a note and a ring. He died before he could resurface from the water. Louisiana man dies during underwater proposal. He was 30 feet under. How long does that take on average to swim up from? I mean geez. This sucks. Misjudged how long he could hold his breath, edit to say I've been corrected in the comments, it was scuba, free diving, science shit, not lung user error, and just didn't make it back up. Fuck. Imagining those moments for the woman. Waiting. Waiting. Where is he? He just swam away he should be here any moment to hear my yes to his proposal. What's taking so long? 
And then what? She goes up to the surface from the room and sees his body? Or is it out of sight down below somewhere? Like fuck. The logistics of these moments are what make it real for me. This old photo of mountaineers from 1924. The men in the picture are George Mallory, left, the greatest mountaineer of the early 20th century, and his climbing partner Sandy Irvine, right, at their advance camp on Everest. Two days later they would attempt the summit and disappear without a trace. This picture, warning for non-graphic mummified human remains, especially puts the last one in context for me. Those are Mallory's remains, found in 1999. The same man in both pictures, 75 years apart. Irvine's body is still missing. Evidence is inconclusive whether they made the summit before their deaths. A kid went missing hiking a spot on the big island of Hawaii. He texted some pictures of the scenery while he was hiking. After he never showed up at home, his family noticed somebody lurking in bushes in the photos he sent. IIRC, my family that live in Hawaii said the spot is illegal to hike at, so it's not like it would have been a heavily populated trail. This one is fucking terrifying. Two brothers smiling, Kevin and Bart Whitaker. Hours later after arriving home from dinner Bart killed Kevin and his mother after conspiring with a friend. He tried to kill his father as well, but he survived. It's a horrible story. I don't know what became of Bart though, all I know is that his father somehow found the courage to forgive him. If I recall correctly, Bart had flunked out of college but his parents still believed he was attending and even giving him money for tuition, which he was blowing on booze, etc. They were out to dinner to celebrate his graduation. He didn't even pull the trigger, he got his friend to do it. Bart also told the cops the shooter was black to keep suspicion away from his friend. This picture of a bed in a child's room. Sad story of a missing four-year-old later found dead from asphyxiation wedged at the foot of her bed between mattress and frame. You can barely make out the little bulge of her body in that pic, but you can. The picture of the bed ran on the news and the mom did interviews while sitting on it. There's more graphic pics of what it looked like with the blankets removed and the body uncovered, but I'm gonna go ahead and not link that. Her body wasn't found after professionals and dogs searched the room, it was found once the smell got bad enough. Also I'm pretty sure I read someone slept in the bed during that time. But not sure on that. I'm sure I'm being an idiot, but I just can't understand how they didn't find her. Like, from my googling of where she must have been, wouldn't they have seen her when they lifted the duvet cover? Especially if someone was sleeping in there. I read all of these but didn't see the relatively recent murder case of the two girls from Delphi. Libby and Abby. It's an ongoing investigation but local law enforcement released a film of their killer taken from one of the girls' phones. But also a photo of Abby walking over the railway bridge shortly before they disappeared. This case really gets me. I remember hearing about how they went missing and there was a search underway my freshman year of college. Several years later and there's been minimal updates since, not including the arrest if that's really connected. Just two kids out hiking on a day off from school. Fucks me up, the lady of silence. Here Juana Barraza, former luchadora and serial killer. She strangled old ladies by pretending to work for the government. Sad story. She was sold to some dude as a sex slave for three beers when she was 12 until her stepdad found her at 17. Ended up with four failed marriages and four kids and worked doing odd jobs as a laundress or cleaner or something. 
then started killing and robbing old ladies if they pissed her off cause they reminded her of her abusive mom. Sad and fucked up story. I always end up thinking about what ifs when I read about backstories. What if they had been saved early? What if their illness had been taken seriously? What if there wasn't discrimination? What if they were caught looking at negative propaganda? Would they have continued to commit these crimes? Monsters creating monsters. This, apparently this is a photo of a four-year-old girl's footprints before she drowned in a pond. This story is legit. The Larimer County Coroner's Office said Thursday that the cause of death was drowning, but hypothermia was also a significant condition. According to the coroner's report, Naomi fell into the pond around 5 p.m. and was found some time later. On Thursday, some questioned the pond's placement, which is a few yards down a sloped hill from the Loveland Sports Park playground. The pond is literally a couple steps from the playground. It is extremely difficult to watch multiple toddlers slash preschoolers at that park, as there are pillars and other obstructions in the way of the view. I moved here 31 halves years ago, and have been saying that pond is a disaster waiting to happen since the beginning. It is a stupid place for a pond, an irresponsible place, a poorly thought out place and a dangerous place. Such a tragedy, Tara Wilson wrote to the Coloradone on Facebook.